Utilities are a set of tools that perform DB tasks, like routine maintenance and data duplication. We have to install them. First, we'll create a file system on the DB host and untar the utilities installation package in that location. Watomic provides several utilities and we'll briefly explain each. In order to connect to the database and perform its assigned task, a utility needs a configured ODBC var string in its associated INI file. We use dbload as an example since we needed to deploy data structures. dbload loads the Atomic data structures. It requires the db directory, which contains all the SQL files with the data structures for every Atomic version. We'll select version 21. This is the environments. We're still working on the db host. We install the utilities and configure them to connect to PostgreSQL. Then we copy the db directory from the Atomic install package and load the data structures in PostgreSQL using the db load utility. First, we create the utility directory and untar the matching install package. We perform these tasks as the user assigns to the installation. We create a utility directory in slash opt slash atomic. We copy the util x6.tar.gz file from the install package to the utility directory. That file is found in the utility directory of atomic.platform. Make sure to grab the right file based on your operating system and distribution. We gunzip and untar the file. Untaring produces a bin directory where all the utilities are stored. Temp will contain logs. Notice that the tar file is preserved. This is the contents of the bin directory. You're going to find several different file types, libraries with the SO extension. You shouldn't worry about these. You also find .sh and .inis. Those are your utilities and their associated configuration files. Let's look at the contents of the utility directory. ls star sh produces the utility shell scripts. The last two characters of the file name tell you what they do. ucbdbar is archive, ucbdbcc is client copy, re is reorg, and ld is load. Other utilities like dbchange don't have a matching sh because they work differently. ls star ini produces their matching configuration files. Let's consider dbload. We have a ucbdbld.sh and a matching ucbdbld.ori.ini. If we ls ucbdbld star, we see the sh, the ini, the jar file to invoke the utility using Java, and the executable with no extension, which can be invoked with options. We'll use this file. Utilities perform a number of tasks. dbload loads data in the database. There's an archive utility, dbchange makes alterations to exported data, client copy is a data duplication service, reorg performs maintenance, we have reporting and revision reporting, a tool to unload data from the db, and finally logmix, which produces files combining logs, reports, and traces. Configure utilities as soon as they're installed so that we can connect to the database. We find the odbc var string in the ini Let's use dbload as an example, since we use it to load the initial atomic data structures. Initially, INIs are called ori.ini and they remain inactive until renamed. This has been a standard atomic practice on Unix platforms for a few years. It's a good indication that the INI file wasn't configured. Also, this is true for all components because it's quite helpful. We have to rename these files and configure the odbc var string. The ODBC var string contains the connection settings to the database. Look for the setting SQL driver connect equals ODBC var. First, we have a string of eight characters defining the database type, say SQL Server or Oracle. Since we're using PostgreSQL, we simply copy the appropriate comments and template line based on our database package and set it in the active line. The string has fields. DNS points to the data source if you're using SQL Server. DB name points to the Postgres database. 
It also contains the user and password used to connect to that database. In the case of PostgreSQL, you also have to specify the hosts. This is the reason we configured pg underscore hba.conf and set IPv4 connections to MD5. That setting allows incoming connections with the passwords. You could argue that you could also use localhost and you'd be right. Utilities are installed on the same system and it would work, but you would need to change pg underscore hba.conf. Our ODBC var string should look like this. We created an empty database called AADB, a user called AAUser, and the passwords. We're connecting to the DB hosts. This is the code for the section. We rename ucbdbld.ori.ini as .ini. We do this for DB load, but you'll need to do this for all the other INIs as well. Then we edit the DB load INI and set ODBC var so it can connect to our PostgreSQL database with the appropriate properties. These are the four fields we have to set, hosts, DB name, user, and passwords. DB load is ready to load the database. Now we need the actual data structures. For this, there's a directory called DB in the installation package. We copy this directory into our utility directory. The DB directory contains a subdirectory called General, which stores data for every version of Atomic. We'll be using version 21. In this 21 directory, we find a number of files. uc underscore upd.txt is of particular interest to us. We use this file as an option when we execute DB load. Here are the code segments. First, we copy the DB directory from the installation package to the utility directory. Next, we execute the DB load utility. The dash B option executes the utility in batch mode, and dash X points to the uc underscore upd.txt file. DB load executes. If it were to fail, you'd see an error message. The process is almost identical on Windows. Note that when components are installed, the temp directory contains the logs. If you ever run into issues, this is the first place to look.